learn all you can learn about that thing, which is our Uprint 3D printer. So what I want you to do is look up like a manual. I don't have one. I got one electronically, but you can find one, right? Get all of the pertinent information out of the manual, all the critical specs. So everything you can get, build chamber, material, tolerances, um, capacity, like how much material can you print, right? How much does it hold? And even cost on material. So we can get a cost per cubic inch of printing, right? So that's your kind of your first thing. It's all right here, 3D printer specs. I put up a couple pictures, uh, but you got the machine. You can look it up. I want to put into a document that we can actually print. So each one of us will build this document. Along with that, I want the step-by-step -step process to print from SolidWorks. So I'm going to go through that because it's unique here, but it's unique everywhere. Like everywhere you go, 3D printers are driven differently. So if you learn one process, you have a fighting chance to, you know, figure out the next one somewhere else or set one up at home or whatever. Ours is, I think, a little unique in that it's an older machine. It's probably 10 years old. It's used a couple different print drivers in the past. And right now we are printing with something called GrabCAD. So if you know GrabCAD, the website, it's a location on the web where people upload their 3D models. It's super cool, honestly. There's some really great stuff. There's some cheesy stuff too, but there's some really, really great models in GrabCAD. So the other thing GrabCAD has is GrabCAD print. That's this thing. So it's kind of in bed with Stratus. That's a Stratus machine. So the parent company Stratus, um, the software GrabCAD print. Yeah, I was hoping it would do this because it's, it's going to make you sign in. Same with that station over there. I'm not going to give you my sign in. I want you to create your own account. So where it says create account, create the account. Use your Saints email. Okay, if you use your Saints email, like when I put in, uh, that um, on the station back there that's associated with the printer, I'll show you which it's the one to the left of the printer. Uh, it automatically understands that we're associated with Mount Hood Community College. Okay, so I'll enter my password. Uh oh, that might have been wrong. I glitched. Yeah, so it was right. So it now says, okay, I know who you are. Select your company account. It's that Mount Hood Community College. You can see it's already checked, right? I just have to hit select account. Boom. Now it's ready to print. So that build chamber is the Uprint, our machine. This area right here, when you go to that machine, we print from over there. I, I think I can print from here because this is the instructor station, but I don't think you can around here because I don't think GrabCAD, GrabCAD print is on those. We'll have to look, but I could print from right here. Um, so to print, once you get into this software, you have to pull in STLs, stereo lithography, okay? So in SolidWorks, you create your model, whatever it is. There's my model, right? I'm playing too off because that bugs me. I cut it in half, right? I built a little mounting place. It's going to mount to the other one. A couple screws here, a couple screws out here, and a couple screws out at that end, right? So you build your model, and then literally you just save as STL. Right, changes it to STL. You don't have to give it the STL extension. It's going to do that. I just leave the file name the same because then you'll have a PRT file and a STR, STL file, right? Hit save and it does it. Okay, so then back to GrabCAD. This is where that model needs to be put. So you can make this window small, not very small. Right, and then open up a window um, and literally drag to it if you want. 
Uh, you can copy and paste. You can go to add models and then go to the directory, however you want to do it. So I'll just drag it in. And it pops it in here. Okay. I think this is the one that's too big. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, once you get it in, if you get the red box, that means it's outside the build area. It's not going to process. Um, you have the tools on the right, and you'll get used to these. They're pretty straightforward. There is an orient, and under orient, there is an auto orient, which I don't think works if you're outside the build area because I hit it, it tried to calculate, and it didn't do anything. It failed, right? Because it's not in the build area. So then you can just use the other tool. You can flip it around with these plus and minuses, like flip it down like that. You can rotate it, right? But no matter how you do it, this is just not gonna fit. That's the half that doesn't fit, okay? So let's bring in another one. I'll bring it in another way, maybe. Let's see if it's in a quick access. Yeah, I think the right side fits. Yeah, that one fits, All right? So I pull it in again. I think auto orient would work. Yeah, it does. Now, why it rotates it that way doesn't really make sense to me. But what I would do is get it into the build chamber. Um, this is a weird, this is different than SolidWorks. It's a right click and hold to rotate, which is not normal, but you'll kind of get the hang of it. And then you can kind of drag it around. And I did get this to fit. Yeah. So that does fit, right? See the red went away. Now it fits. And I can run an estimate. So this is what we should be doing is running estimates to try and get the time and the resources as low as possible. So that's kind of our first task. When you get a model built, which we have, I think you have some models built, right? So you can play with this printing. Um, if I run the estimate, it'll do it. And it'll tell me how long. So I think I'm currently printing this 180, like the flat side down. And I think it was just under six hours. Yeah, so why why did our auto orient like put it in that position? I have no idea. It's an extra hour and a lot more support material. So support material is the material that supports the build material, right? Y'all get that? Uh, it's a cheaper material. It's water soluble. So we can put it in our hydrostatic machine in the back and it'll just dissolve it away, which is nice for like internal geometries, right? They get filled with that support material and there's like no way to get it out of there. You can pick at it all you want. It's just not coming out of there. We can put it in the machine in the back room and wash it out and it should come out clean. So that's the process. Um, what else do I need to tell you in here? I think that's about it. If you do have a model that's bigger than the build chamber and you want to print it to, to a scale, you can do that. You can scale things down. So that is right here. And so right now it looks like it's at 100% and it's, show, it's showing you each axis. So we're kind of long in one axis. We're only one inch tall. You can uniform scale, like scale the whole thing, which I recommend. <laughs> If you do one axis scaling, then it's going to tweak it into some shape that you didn't start with. So, um, but if I go like 90, you know, it just drops it down. What's interesting, if I go 80, it does 80 from the original, not 80% from the 90%. So that's a little different than some scaling that I've had. I like that in that it makes, it's easy to calculate like how much you want to go. Um, I think that's it. You know, this is just move things around. Um, this is, I think, if you want to add notes, that's scale, that's orient. And then, of course, you can roll it around with your mouse to take a look at it. Um, I tend to put stuff in the upper left. So here's the handle, the handle you pull it in and out. So that's the front, right? So the head rests in the back of the machine. So if you put a small part right here, that head has to travel the distance of the plate, do a print, travel back, wipe itself off on this little brush, travel the distance of the plate, right? 
So it's just going to take longer. Uh, if you work the kind of far left region, that's where the head rests. So then it's just doing small movements. You can kind of watch it. You'll see where it goes back to brush uh, and clean itself off. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I loaded the picture of it. And then the second picture is the plate on the back. And all the, all the information you would ever need is right here. So the model you print, SE plus 3D printer, you'll be able to Google that. It'll pop right up. You'll be able to get the manual, pick all the specifications out, organize it into a nice document, and then kind of give me a step-by-step. -step. Like for a new student, how would you print from SolidWorks to that thing? Right. For you all, if you're modeling on your laptop or even on these stations, you're going to have to save that STL somewhere. Uh, I recommend like a OneDrive to the cloud, but you could save it to your phone or a flash drive, walk it into the station to the left, load it up. Right. That's how a student will print. Um, if you have some kind of cloud saving area, that's easiest. That's what I do is just put it in OneDrive. Because then when I go there, I just log into OneDrive and all my files are right there and I can print. Or if I go to John's house and I want to print there, I just log into OneDrive. All my files are there. I can print, right? Yeah. So whatever you use, get used to using some kind of virtual storage space. It's super nice. My neighbor's got a new CNC machine. I literally just saved what I wanted onto my OneDrive. When I went down there, he said, yeah, well, let's cut it right now. I'm like, cool. I log into my OneDrive, pull up the file cut. So yeah, it's super handy. Um, yeah, and so if you have a model that you can practice with, that's the way to go about it. We'll see if they were supposed to put GrabCat on these stations, but I never checked. So I guess we'll find out. You can, yeah, it's free. It's a free download. It's GrabCAD print. So that's, there is a GrabCAD website. Um, you should not have to pay for it. It looks like this. It has the little P GrabCAD print. Um, so don't pay for it, no matter what, uh, because, you know, they always try to get you to upgrade the premium or whatever the heck to, to pay for something. But um, GrabCAD itself. Yeah, being able to uh, talk to a model at home to do this in the box is not so here's GrabCAD free. Uh, I want to go to the website. No. Yeah. Is it the first one? Yeah. So here they want you to sign in too. Uh, let's see if I automatically sign in. What are the chances? Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. So once you get an account, then you have access to GrabCAD. So this is not GrabCAD print. This is just GrabCAD. But you can get the softwares off of here, I believe. Um, so we're in community. Oh, there's print. Yeah, there it is. So it's pretty easy to do. Make that, create that account first. That'll be a lot easier. But um, the model searches, super fun to do. Like if you're looking for something, uh, more than likely it's been modeled by somebody. It could be really crappy though. They're not all great models and there's a lot of different softwares. So when you do a model search, you're gonna wanna filter for SolidWorks if you want a SolidWorks file or AutoCAD if you want an AutoCAD file. Otherwise you're gonna get MicroStation and all these other softwares. You'll look at it and go, oh, that's so cool. I want that. No, there won't be a SolidWorks version of it, right? It's just another software, so. Yeah, if you've not been on here, you should go on here. Uh, lots of very cool models. Yeah, yeah, people loading stuff up, like a full 3D printer where you can actually get the part numbers, buy all the part numbers, 3D print the 3D printer and then build it, and then 3D print another 3D printer type of thing. It's pretty, yeah, it's pretty like, like an old mind blowing. So, all right.
I need one of those. I don't need a 3D model. I just need the toggle switch. All right, that's it. Got it? Yeah. Yep. And I don't think, do you have the book? So there's a book for this class you do? Okay, so there's a tutorial out of there I want you to work through. 3.1-3.4. So look in chapter three for it and just work through it. It's step-by-step, step, but you don't have to do it step-by-step. Step. Just look at it, start modeling. If you get stuck, then go to the tutorial and go, oh, how the heck do I do that, right? All right, that's it.